uh, for personal satisfaction, to have a social impact, and with a modest compensation. Yeah. All right, well, you know, you talk that these are people that want to work. Um, I've spoken out on this a lot. So these could be these could be folks anywhere from their 50s, 60s, 70s, and so on, uh, which is about 20% of our population. Absolutely. And, I should add, 60% of our spending. So we're not talking about a shabby group here at all. No, uh, and the incoming generations are even healthier, better educated, and much more likely to define themselves by work. And speaking of incoming generations, a boomer reaches 50 every eight seconds in this country. So we, again, are not talking about a small population. No, it's a very large But group. you talk about these are folks that want to contribute. They want the... Um, the, the satisfaction of getting us some being paid. These are folks that maybe are cousins being paid. But the other side of the coin is why in the world don't we as a country realize what we're missing? These are most well-educated, talented people and for, certainly people who could, in the most part, be very positive role models. I think you're absolutely right. And I think the country is changing. Remember, um, it wasn't so long ago that people went to work, retired, and then sat home and sort of waited to die. And that they died at 65. Now yes. they're dying at 85. Right. And so we're really seeing a whole new stage in life in which people can take the skills and experience that they acquired in their first career and apply it in different ways for the benefit of society. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're matching. But on the other hand, um, your problem isn't getting people that want to do this. Isn't your problem more finding the opportunities for them? Right now it is, because we're relatively new. And uh, people are still uh, have stereotypes in their minds about older workers. When you talk about people, what, what are you talking about? The Human employers. Human resource people? The employers. Is this in the, is this in the for profit world? In the school world, where is this coming we from? We are working only in the nonprofit and government sector. And what we're finding very slowly is that once people uh, interview reservists, they realize that what they're getting is a huge bargain. They are getting people whose life experience is much greater than many of the staff they have and that they can contribute a great deal to their organization. But it's the lack of familiarity. It's not really understanding. If you're 25 or 30 years old, you can't imagine what it's like to be 60 until you are 60, of course, and then you realize that it's not so different from being 30 or 40. Yeah, or well, on the other hand, so many of these 25 and 30 year olds are depending on the 60 or 65s for their own livelihood. Yes. <laughs> Which is another story. Yes. A different show. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know something? It's uh, many folk, many, uh, I don't want to use the word older, many uh, of these more mature workers have been the, have been the recipient, my myself have, of very tacky interviews where they're asked, you know, insulting questions like, you know, what was your best experience in the corporate world or what's your biggest deficiency, some typical, you know, kind of run-of-the-mill personnel question or home human resource question. Do you do anything to... I mean, there, there, there has to, it kind of has to be a two-way street. A, you have to get the people, and B, you have to train these other people how to, how to use the folks that want to come in. Yeah, we, we certainly do a lot of uh, orienting of both groups, but uh, employers come to reserve because they know that they are going to be interviewing retirees who have some fairly extensive experience. They see their resumes. They can actually select the people they want to interview. We insist that they have a very clear job description ready. And so the reservist can also say, what does this involve? You yeah. know, not, I'm not here just to... Lick envelopes. Right, to lick envelopes. Uh, although sometimes in the not-for-profit world, we That's all okay. lick listen, envelopes. But uh, listen, I'm in the for-profit world. I've done plenty of <laughs> envelope looking in my day, let right. me tell you. But I don't really think that happens very often, precisely because people know what our brand right. involves. Right. So, how do you, so how did you get started? You got started four years ago. Yes. And you're, and you're a not-for-profit, but you, you do receive some kind of funding. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, we, uh, we are funded through many generous foundations. 
Um, in addition, uh, our business model is pretty efficient, which is we expect the employers to pay the reservists, oh. all of whom receive $10 an hour, regardless of what they do. Oh. And they pay us a modest fee for the processing of it. Good for you. It almost, almost it's like a temp agency or something. Sort of. Sort of, sort of on that model. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me something. What can press, what can, I mean, I like your model. I mean, I like what you do. What can something like good, uh, getting your money's worth, which is my show or our radio, what can, how can we help you? Well, uh, just inviting me on here is helping. Um, we want to get the word out to more retirees, uh, especially those um, in the outer boroughs, that there is life after what they call retirement, that they're needed, that their skills can be valued, and that they can also have flexibility in the kind of work they want to uh, part. It, Why aren't the schools doing more of this, Mary? Well, that's a really great question because, in fact, we are working with the schools now. Are, you, will, with, are you working with the New York City schools? Yes. We already have a, a, a partnership with uh, the After School Corporation to uh, place retirees um, in after-school programs working with kids, in school-based after-school programs, and we're just about to launch a new initiative in which we're going to recruit and train and deploy retirees to help kids get into college and That's to cool. play the role of the college counselor that in more affluent communities is, is a given. Right. Um, we're very excited about that, and I think not only will they be providing very hard skills uh, in terms of application filling and finding colleges and, and coaching. But they'll also be transferring a lot of the social capital that they have acquired. Exactly. You know, um, um, yesterday at ICON in our society, I was reading again about uh, the story of Senator Ted Kennedy, and um, that was a whole family based on public service. Yes. And I re it reminded me about the fact that... Um, uh, it shouldn't be so hard for people that want to give back. I mean, it was Rose Kennedy that said, to those who have much, much is expected. It shouldn't be so hard in America that for those that want to give back to find such a hard, have such a hard time doing it. Well, as I said, we're only four years old, but we're clearly on a, a wave here. Um, more and more people are coming to us, asking us how we do this. Uh, the 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 recent uh, Serve America Act that was named after Senator Kennedy uh, right, not, exactly. not only provides for an expansion of our AmeriCorps program, which is the main public service, community service program, but for the first time uh, will carve out 10% of the slots for people 55 and older and allow them to give their uh, education awards to their children and grandchildren. Which so I think awesome. we really are so we're kind of turning the corner. The corner. But yeah, and even speaking of that, you know, um, it's been shown so many times what a positive impact grandparents have in children's lives. And um, you could almost have the other coin of the version of Teach for America or something where grandparents have their own organization and provide uh, um, those, that kind of uh, support. Right. Homework, well, homework support. Yeah, there, there yeah. is the Experience yeah. Corps, which is a wonderful organization that does just that. Um, Reserve is different in that it provides uh, work opportunities for professionals to really use their professional skills. Mm -hmm. And so we And the stipend is a different piece of your, yes, of your yes, puzzle. Yeah. yeah. Are you national? Not yet. But we, so where are you, just in New York? We are in New York City. Uh, so far, we've placed 900 people in the past three and a half years. And uh, we have about 300 working right now. And next year, we will be uh, bringing our model to other cities. Oh, good for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah. And in fact, there are a couple of organizations that um, I will mention also, a school organization, another women's group that might be good connections for you. Great. Yeah, because, um, I, um, you know, we talk about getting your money's worth here. But my gosh, 20% of the population for 10 bucks an hour, I can't think of a better deal. Neither can we. <laughs> <laughs> was this your idea? No, no. This was the idea of our founding board members, uh, Jack Rosenthal, Herb Stirs, Michael Weinstein, all of whom are uh, very prominent social entrepreneurs and who really saw their peers uh, 
retiring without having any opportunity to use their skills. And so the, the notion of uh, exchanging money really became key. It just elevates the relationship and makes everyone take it more seriously. Right. Well, because that, that's what, what you pay for is what you respect. Yeah. And, and uh, I think that's probably true. And then what people receive money for, they take as a serious commitment as opposed to, I don't, if I don't feel like it, I won't go today. Exactly. Right. Kind exactly. Of right. Um, the, other piece, the other piece of it is that honestly, um, all research has shown too that older people uh, old, more mature adults, they age better, their health is better, their social skills are better. Everything's better about for folks that stay involved. Yes, yes. And frankly, could be a cost savings to this country in terms of health care. You are absolutely right. Uh, the surveys that we conduct um, of our reservists indicate that uh, their work really does result in enhanced well-being. And, and we consider that certainly one of our missions. Uh, right. um, and yes, it, in terms of health care, there's no question that Staying if you stay Staying socially active, engaged. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, you can see I'm an enthusiastic supporter. <laughs> uh, so I thank you for writing to the, the – what was the article from Banks of Jobs that – that triggered this letter to the editor? Um, I think it was an article about... Uh, the jobless? Yeah, the jobless rate okay. and, uh, and the, you know, certainly... Frankly, that could be a very good outplacement source, too, for you, for, for a lot of folks that are taking early retirement. Uh, we are if they're electing to take early retirement. Absolutely. We have a specific project called Sector Switchers for people who do take early retirement and want to pursue another career in the nonprofit world but don't really have any experience. And, and mm. uh, we now have several former corporate executives working 30 hours a week at $10 an hour. And at the end of the year, they're going to really you know, be able to go out into the nonprofit world and be uh, be leaders. Yeah, start something. Yeah. You should set up an outpost in Michigan. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We may. We anyway, may. I, thanks so much for being on this show. Oh. It's Reservice. You have a website. Yes, we right. do. We, I think it's on the screen yes. and, we'll pre and we'll post it to um, a really good way uh, for uh, to make you or someone in your family give and feel good about giving. This is Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West. Thanks for watching.